Bauhaus Fusion, a series of paintings using Bauhaus design with watercolor techniques. A beautiful painting is like a beautiful piece of music. It lifts our spirits and takes us on a mystical journey to the center of our being. Hello, my name is Bill Keenan, and this video is about my recent series of paintings titled Bauhaus Fusion. Bauhaus Fusion is an experiment in contrast and synthesis. By combining the soft, flowing, mysterious feel of watercolors with the hard, sharp edges of Bauhaus design, many of my paintings stimulate 3D effects and after images that make shapes appear and disappear, causing an optical illusion of movement throughout the painting. These subliminal effects make us more aware that the world has hidden dimensions and encourage us to step into the collective unconscious. Take a moment and focus on the black square at the center of the painting and notice that there's movement and after images in the peripheral of the painting. However, before I show you my paintings, let me briefly discuss the Bauhaus movement, as many of you may not be familiar with Bauhaus. Bauhaus was an art, architecture, and craft school that opened in Germany in 1919. Many of its students and faculties became pioneers in modern art, the most famous of whom was Paul Klee. Here are three examples of Klee's work. Notice the role of the rectangle in his compositions. That is also generally true of other Bauhaus artists. The Bauhaus movement reflected post-industrial European modernism. Europe had recently transitioned from an agrarian society to an industrial society, and the rectangle is an appropriate symbol of industrialization and modernism. Here on the left are paintings of two other well-known Bauhaus artists. Vasily Kandinsky, top left, was a well-respected Impressionist before becoming one of the pioneers of modernism. Personally, I think he and Picasso were often a bit over the top, but they must be respected for their willingness to challenge traditions and show us that art is much more than landscapes, portraits, and flower vases. On the bottom left is a painting by Laszlo Moholy Negi. He also boldly charted new territory that symbolized rapidly changing society for better or worse. Finally, on the right hand side, we have two paintings by Gustav Klimt. Some people think of Klimt as a Bauhaus artist, although that is technically inaccurate. Klimt had already passed away a year before the Bauhaus school was established. Nonetheless, in the opinions of many art historians, Klimt was highly influential for many of the styles we would later see in the Bauhaus movement. Notice Klimt's heavy use of rectangles in the two paintings. This is the first of my 14 Bauhaus fusion paintings, which I'm going to share with you today. This painting is titled Greek Islands. All the paintings in this series are named after places that have inspired me artistically and left me with enduring impressions of their unique essence. Although I'm an American, my wife Louise and I lived in North Africa, the Middle East and England for 23 years. During this time, we spent numerous vacations on the Greek islands, which is a truly magical experience. In this painting, I wanted to capture the essence of the Greek islands through Bauhaus fusion. The painting reflects the soft pastel colors that make the island such a relaxing, blissful fairyland experience. My second painting is titled Yorkshire. Yorkshire is a county in the north of England, not too far from Scotland. 
Yorkshire is famous for the wilderness areas, the Yorkshire Moors and the Yorkshire Dales, as well as Yorkshire Pudding. The city of York is a charming medieval walled city that is well worth visiting. But it is the lovely unspoiled green countryside which captures the essence of England and will linger in your subconscious for the rest of your days. You already had a peek of this painting titled Roma. Rome, of course, is one of the most beautiful cities in the world. It is historic, sophisticated, and charming. As an artist, I was drawn to the subtle blends of ochre, orange, and salmon. And at least during my visit, most of the Romans were elegantly dressed in black, marking a sharp contrast to the faded but rich colors of the buildings. I was struck by how the Romans could leave a building unpainted for decades, and yet the walls became more beautiful with each passing year. Rome is an undisputed leader of fashion and design, and it is apparent everywhere you look. The Valley of Roses is the moniker given to the Dadis River Gorge near Wazirzad southeast of Marrakesh in Morocco. The Dadis River flows 220 miles from its source in the high Atlas Mountains until it joins the Draw River at the edge of the Sahara. The Gorge has steep, multicolored walls that rise to 1,500 feet above the riverbed below. Most of Morocco's roses are grown here and distilled into rose water, which Moroccans use to scent their hands before enjoying their famous cuisine. This painting is named for Assisi, a hillside town in central Italy. Assisi is the birthplace of St. Francis and the location of a splendid basilica named in his honor. However, what impressed me most about Assisi was its centuries-old cobblestone streets lined with elegant stone buildings with uniquely crafted hardwood doors, each one a Bauhaus work of art. Assisi transformed my definition of aesthetics. This painting was inspired by the sights and sounds of Barcelona and the indelible mark of its famous Art Deco architect, Antoni Gaudi. Gaudi is best known for his weird Sagrada Familia Cathedral but most people outside of Spain are unaware of his elegant and visionary Art Deco buildings that make Barcelona so special. One of his trademark styles is his sculptures and pillars mosaiced with broken tiles. My painting is an attempt to capture some of that unscripted freeform spirit. I call this painting Arizona, which is my nickname for Arizona, where Louise and I have lived for the last 16 years. This painting has characteristics of the arts and crafts of Southwest Indians, North African Berbers, Middle East Bedouins, and of course, the Bauhaus movement itself. I said earlier that the rectangle represented industrialization. Ironically, it also represents many ancient tribal societies. I suspect that has something to do with the fact that weaving on a loom generally creates rectangular weavings, which encourages rectangles in the design. Notice that the watercolor background in this painting looks like windswept sand. I created this effect by tilting the canvas while the water and acrylic mixture was still wet. Hence the drips on the right-hand side. I chose to keep the drips because at least in my mind, they add to the impression that the painting is related to the Indians of the Southwest. The copper bars at the bottom subliminally remind us that Arizona is copper country. This is a painting of Marrakesh in Morocco. Marrakesh is on the edge of the Sahara and the desert has an ever present influence. The city is mostly salmon colored and more important buildings are adorned with glazed green tiled roofs and great brass doors. The Ketubia Mosque overlooks the city 
and its call to prayer provides the soundtrack for the red-orange sunset before the city comes alive during the relatively cooler nights. This painting is titled Via Fratina, which is one of the most famous streets in Rome. Via Fratina is in the center of the historic shopping district. You can feel the pride of the Roman Empire, but everything else is ultra contemporary. This is the heart of Rome's fashion industry, and it has attitude. Many of the shops are so expensive, they only display three or four dresses. Even if you can barely afford to sit and have a cappuccino or gelato, it is a wonderful place to soak up the essence of Italy. Please take a deep breath and stare at the painting for a moment as it is full of movement. I believe it captures the buzz you sense when you're walking down Via Frattina. The painting Cambridge Zen is named for Cambridge University in England. It is one of the oldest universities in the world, founded in 1209. The university has some of the finest medieval architecture in the world and is dripping in tradition. Nonetheless, as you sit in its restaurants and cafes, the mood is profoundly modern. That might be because Cambridge has always been one of the world's foremost centers of science. Whatever the case, the students are international, ultra sophisticated, and interested in new age lifestyles. This painting reflects their less is more attitude that I sense from the students who are riding about the university's cobblestone streets on their bicycles with their books stacked in the basket mounted on the handlebar. We once lived on the 10th floor of an apartment building overlooking the Potomac with lovely views of the Capitol building and the Washington and Jefferson memorials, as well as the George Washington Parkway. On weekends, we frequently drove down the parkway to Mount Vernon, stopping at the riverside parks along the way. The parkway is always beautiful, but exhilarating when autumn turns the trees gold and orange. The Greek island Santorini is one of the most stunningly beautiful places in the world. Its white villages are nestled on steep hillsides overlooking the sea-filled caldera of a volcano which erupted in 1646 BC. This painting is a Bauhaus representation of the legendary sunset view from the Santorini village Ia. This painting is titled Petra, in honor of Jordan's extraordinary archaeological site of the Nabataean civilization. Its beautiful temples are carved out of vivid pink and gold sandstone. It is believed to have been settled thousands of years ago. However, because it can only be accessed through a very narrow canyon, it became a lost city for hundreds of years and was not rediscovered until 1812. You may have noticed this painting has a similar composition as my painting titled Arizona, except for the fact that the watercolored background looks a great deal like many of the sandstone walls you see at Petra. The, Bedouin, the Bedouins of Jordan and the Indians of the American Southwest have many shared characteristics. The Cotswold is the icon of elegant English countryside. It covers six counties in South Central England, including Gloucestershire and Oxfordshire. The land is dotted with thatched medieval villages, churches, and stately homes built of distinctive local yellow limestone. It stretches about 100 miles from Bath in the south to Chipping Camden in the north. The gold in this painting symbolizes the considerable wealth of the Cotswolds which was initially due to the early British woolen industry. 
wool contributes to the economy, but today most of the sheep end up on the dining tables of the expensive mansions and hotels. Lavender is an important cash crop and one that adds beauty to the hillsides, hoping to make it one of England's favorite tourist destinations. If you would like more information on the Greek islands, please visit our website, top10greekislands.com. Also, if you go to our website, keenanpaintings.com, you will find a link to my Greek islands watercolors. For more travel information on England, please visit our site at englandtop10.com. Thank you for watching our video about the Bauhaus fusion paintings. Please indicate that you liked it, make a comment, and share the link with other lovers of art. Also, please go to our website, keenanpaintings.com, and see other paintings. If you're interested in buying a painting, just drop us an email at louise at keenanpaintings.com and we will make all the arrangements. Have a great day.